Rolling in the Mist is a series with fantasy violence, mentions of gore, and worst of all, cussing. Viewer discretion is advised. <laughs> Welcome to the Rolling in the Mist Halloween special, where we are not playing City of Mist, no, we are playing another game powered by the apocalypse. We are playing Monster of the Week. I am your keeper, Kevin Carpenter, and joining me today are Pablo Mia. As Randu Solomon. Ryan Bravo as. Uh, Howard Dibble. Jason McGarrow playing Dr. Kevin Carpenter. I've <laughs> 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 oh, been waiting for that all day. He, Very scared. Uh, audience, I want you to know, Jason told me everything about his character except his name. He, yep. he, was, he was hiding it. <laughs> he, he kept telling me it would be a surprise. He, he showed me his character sheet and made sure that his finger was covering the name. <laughs> And I realize now why. <laughs> okay. I also love he didn't even change his voice for it. Nope. <laughs> God. <laughs> I'm, J- I'm Kevin Carpenter. Because God forbid. Mm-hmm. God oh forbid. God. Like, you couldn't hey. even, like, try to sound like me. Hey, like, nah. Okay. Hey, I would encourage hey, we you We brought him in for his personality. You know what I was talent. thinking? When I was, have you ever seen Colin Mockery when he does his terrible oh, impressions? Yeah. On uh, Who's Line? Oh, yeah. he does, he's like, yeah. <laughs> he just walks in. He's like, do you have anything for JT Howard? He's just like this <laughs> yeah, mundane <laughs> voice. <laughs> Nothing's changed. He's like, did you know I was on coach? <laughs> that was my thinking behind this. <laughs> Well, well great. all right. Mm-hmm. Well, there kind of goes the spooky mood. Nope. But you know what? Let's go into it. Just leave the so. spooky to me. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So, audience, uh, we're playing Monster of the Week. It's a game that plays very much similar to City of Mist. The core mechanic of rolling 2d6 and adding a number to try to do something is pretty much the same. You get 10 plus, you did the thing. 7 to 9, you kind of did the thing. 6 minus, <laughs> you didn't do the thing. And I get to do something. Jason, you have fun? No, this is the way he's saying it. You didn't do the thing. And I don't know. That was just funny. <laughs> I've been doing a lot of like like City of Mist like one shots recently. Listen, you, so you've I, said I, that phrase multiple times. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've kind of like I've got the whole gist at this point. I've had to explain like the game yeah. a lot. Um, so yeah, so Monster of the Week plays pretty much the same, except instead of power tags, you guys have stats. Uh, your stats are charm, which is what you use to talk to people. Uh, cool, which is what you guys use to you know act under pressure, but also help each other out. Uh, sharp, which is sort of your perception. Uh, tough, which is what you use to kick, you know, kick some ass and protect people. And then weird, which is your, of course, your weird move. Uh, for most of you guys, it's like using magic. I think with uh, your character, Kevin. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's going to be great. You, be you have the alternate weird move. Yeah, uh, like instead a, of magic, I have science. Yeah, the weird science. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, this is going to be fun. This is going to be so weird. <laughs> so, Kevin. Yes, Kevin. Yes, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> so, the other two things that are different, um, you guys have luck points. That's a mechanic in Monster of the Week where uh, you can spend a luck point to either make a roll a success or mm, negate all damage from, like, an attack. So, basically, this is your saving grace. You guys are going to have two of those luck points. If you spend both, you're doomed. And what that means, we'll figure it out if it comes to that. Also, the way you guys gain experience is by failing rolls, pretty much. Every time you fail a roll, you'll mark an experience. And for this one shot, we've made it so that way you just need three experience points in order to level up. You guys also have some moves where it's like, if you do a thing, you mark experience, but we'll get to that when we get to it. So, uh, with that said, I'll describe the spooky scene, and then we'll introduce your guys' characters from there. Sound good? Yeah. 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 I mean, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking about cookies. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, yeah. I was thinking I what you would be thinking. <laughs> That's a method acting <laughs> skill, I gotta say. <laughs> All right. Well, with. <laughs> nope. Nope. Halloween special canceled. Not, nope. Nope. Not no, staying. I'm, 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 Thanks I'm for coming, good. everybody. If you'd like to watch our other episodes, right. check out right. Rolling in the Mist. This is every... Kevin Carpenter as the new <laughs> MC. Yeah, you, can, you can go. As, we have a backup. I have a, uh, this is we, Kevin we have a backup, Carpenter. Kevin Carpenter. I'm like Kevin Carpenter. We got another one. Baby, there's only one. And with that, 
let's get into the session. We start inside a small wooden room. The roof is curved into a point, making this room more of a triangle than a normal square. And very much this room looks like an attic of some kind, but certainly no normal attic. What's immediately apparent is that in the middle of this attic is a dark circle, roughly the size of a trash can lid, burned in the center of the wooden floor. And while the attic itself is old and musty, there are two machines, roughly the shape and size of a generator, placed on either side of the burn. Thick bundles of electrical cable stream from them to the walls and into the floor below. And scattered across this room are three figures who are laying on the ground, seemingly unconscious, before they all begin to stir. Pablo, would you like to introduce your character? Yeah, right. Hi. Hi. What's going on? He musties himself up from the, from the floor, all dusty and musty like. Hi. His name is Randall Solomon, and he's. Uh, he used to be a contractor. Then he decided to get his hands more involved and became a simple construction worker. He was. Uh, had himself a wife, had himself a daughter at the time. And then, as she always warned him, his lovely wife Clarice, I told him one of these days something's going to happen to you in one of them pits. You're going to fall down there and you're going to break your neck. You're going to get yourself killed. I've told you this since day one, but damn it. <laughs> damn it, Randolph, I don't love you more than he loves me own mum. And so I'll let you do it. And sure enough, my old lady, she was right. Ran into a bit of trouble myself, I did. Found myself into one of them pits while they were. <laughs> <laughs> Found myself into one of them pits while they were pouring down the cement, broke me neck. Was halfway neck, was halfway dead to heaven or hell, don't know which way it was. And I was accepted by a voice. Didn't recognize his voice, seemed a little outdated. But he said his name was Charlie. Said I had a choice to make. I could either keep on my merry way, not knowing which high or hell who so I would go, up to the pearly gates or down to the fiery spires. Oh, I could make my jolly way back to the mortal plane. But he joined me. That was the deal. And like a fucking fool, I say, yeah. I want to see me wife. I want to see me, I want to see me little Mabel again. Take me back. I want to see my little girl. And he said, all right, chap. Well, he didn't say chap, but... Let's go. And then, from that day forward, I am the shadow husk of a man you see before you now. Randall Solomon, former construction worker, former full self of a man. And here I am. Where am I? As, as much as I hate to ask this <laughs> after all of that description, what does Randall Solomon look like? <laughs> Because Pablo, every time, every time you introduce a character. Right, right. I was like, I was like, Jesus Christ, is the opening to the movie? Look, as, look, as a fellow actor, Pablo, fantastic work. As a production person, what the fuck did what your character look like? I love how we're not playing City of Mist and Pablo still got the the voiceover monologue in, in this session. I love it. What what the fuck does Randall Solomon look like? What is he wearing? Don't even expect me to be in complete with that. Uh, he's wearing a sort of... Um, a plaid shirt, long sleeves. Some knickers. Uh, his knickers are made of um, some cheap material. Not quite potato sack looking material, but the cheap pants, you can tell you got them off, off a Goodwill rack or something. As well as his shirt, which is a rather baggy, perhaps a size too large. At least it was. At least now it was at once. Because he's a gaunt fellow, yeah? Basically, he looks like Jason Statham if everything went wrong in his life. <laughs> Instead of a trick, rigid jaw, what? Okay, nope, nope, that's perfect. I like it. There we go. All Great right. description. That'll Stop. take it. Stop okay. just now. Yeah, so, right. So, Randall Solomon, you wake up, uh, you have a slight headache, and also something kind of digging into your side. Not painfully, just uncomfortably. And as you turn your body, you see that you are laying on top of a 
large, wickedly curved knife. And we move to the other side of the room. Uh, Jason, could you introduce your character? It better be as good as that shit. Oh, no, it's not as good. <laughs> yeah, be follow that, mate. <laughs> 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 I don't even know how to start after that fucking performance. Hey, here's, here's a tip. Less. Uh, <laughs> too less. Right. So, I'm waking up. <laughs> My name is Dr. Kevin Carpenter. I am a scientist. Yep. Uh, about a good six foot, I would say. <laughs> I'm wearing right now a reddish shirt with like... I think like a tree pattern on it, some blue jeans, and if I'm not mistaken, black and white Nikes with nice square glasses. Although they're kind of damaged at the moment, not sure why. I yeah. hate you. Hey, hey. I hate the, you so much. He said they're nice. Yeah, they're nice. <laughs> yeah, they're nice. Yeah, take it where you can get it, man. Like, okay. I, cl- I clearly shop at Ross. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Kevin. That, that's not even where I shop at. <laughs> I know. It's Marshall's, fucker. Oh, same difference. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. Damn, that was actually... If it helps, I'll talk you right. for a Nordstrom rack sort of fella. <laughs> okay, back to the game. Uh, Kevin Carpenter. Yes? You... Uh, Dr. Carpenter. Dr. Dr. Carpenter. Carpenter. There we go. If that... it makes you feel any better, I went with Carpenter because of John Carpenter. Oh, really? Yeah. No, That's the reason. That reason. <laughs> I mean, that was a good excuse. The truth is it was because... I, I mean, I do like the name Dr. Carpenter because that's yeah. just two jobs in one. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> I one Dr. Carpenter. I don't like I have a that PhD in psychology. <laughs> and a minor in pain. <laughs> so, Dr. Carpenter, yes. uh, you wake up from laying on this dusty wooden floor and as you kind of stir... You sit up and you see clutch in your hand is what looks like it's it, it's a square device, like something that might have been like a calculator or a remote or something like that, except the half that would like hold the screen has blown apart. Got it. Why? <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> oh, shit. In fact, <laughs> you have no memory of why you are in this room or what happened. <gasps> And as we turn the camera, we see our third protagonist. Bravo. Please, please describe your character. Thank you for the vote of confidence, Kevin. No, no. Honestly, after those two, like... Oh, I'm, I was talking to you. I was I'm, talking to Kevin. Thank you. I, <laughs> <laughs> Didn't I warn you? Didn't I warn you? Oh, so, man, um, hi, uh, my name is Howard Dibble. Uh, my <laughs> friends like to call me Huey. Uh, I am a, uh, a 16-year-old uh, boy uh, from... God, I hate to say this. Uh, from, <laughs> sorry, I can't, I can't improvise anything right now. Um, from um, Los Angeles. Oh, was, yeah. you, do you got something better? No, you sound like you're from Silver Springs, Maryland. Maybe. Okay, let's do that then. Uh, <laughs> From Maryland. Actually, I know way too many people from Maryland. Um, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I'm wearing uh, a simple uh, Jansport. Jansport, right? That was the, the backpack brand? Or yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, simple Jansport uh, blue backpack. Uh, I have some nice little tight jeans. Um, I <laughs> No, no, not like that, Jason. <laughs> um, uh, I have a skateboard. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm wearing this beanie. Uh, that's like cool, but not many people see me without it. So it's kind of weird if they don't, if you don't see me with a hat. Um, and uh, I'm wearing just a simple, uh, teal, uh, shirt that kind of really stands out. Even when I'm in the dark, it just like illuminates me for some reason. So I, 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 I really stand out from places. So, yeah. We need to talk about these high schoolers you're staring at. <laughs> I just watched, I just watched TV. I was like, okay, I guess to go with that. I have a gun. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, actually. Uh, you want to describe why? Yeah, Huey Dibble, uh, you you wake up <laughs> and you find your uh, you, you find your gun scattered across the floor, uh, just like a few feet away from you. And you also see, you know, as you sort of like get up and start like moving toward the gun, you look down and you see that you were uh, sitting on a pile of uh, like strands of rope that have all been uh, singed at the edges. Okay. 
oh man, I don't, I don't, I, I can't lose my dad's gun, and I put it back in my pocket. And uh, Huey, you too have no memory of being in this room. Oh, what? Where am I? Do do I see anything out of the? Like, is it just the room? Do I see them inside the room? Yeah. So, uh, just from casually looking around, mm-hmm. you see, you know, the the scene that I described earlier. You 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 seem like you're in kind of like a large attic. Okay. Um, you see the the burned mark in the center of the floor. You see these two strange machines, and you see these like just bundles of cables moving from the machines to the walls, and then under the floor. Um, you, you also see like there's candles strewn about, and you see these two other figures here that are uh, waking up and noticing you as well. Hi, what's the meaning of this? Who are you, Law? Oh, um, uh, 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 who who are you? Your mom ever teach you any manners there, young lad? Asked your first ID, <laughs> and I won't be asking a third time. Oh, um, my, my, my name is my name is Howard. People people call me Huey. Huey. Um, what's what's your name? I'm Kevin. How you doing? <laughs> Evening there. Doing about as well as you both are, I suppose. I Solomon. I, I look at I look, I look at Kevin. I'm like. I can understand what he just said. I have no clue. Rando Solomon. I understood that. Okay. Uh, hi, hi Rando. Um, <clears throat> is 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 this is this your home? And he looks around. <laughs> he looks around the room. <laughs> That's a good question. Whenever he looks around, I mean, he looks like he is a gaunt. His face is gaunt. Mm-hmm. He is gray. He's pale, and he looks like he is. I mean, he's just mm-hmm. yeah. soulless. So he looks around at your question and looks at the room. As fitting as the decor might be for my personality. And looks back at Huey. No. Oh, is, 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 is this your home? No, but to get back to you, a simple no would have been just as sufficed. I used to have a bit of sense of humor. I don't know what he's saying. Anyways, <laughs> is this your house? <laughs> no, no. Um, <clears throat> I, no, this is my house. Uh, I, I live with my dad. And he, this this is in our attic. All right, so you're pathetic. Anyways, oh. this is in your house and this ain't my house. Who, whose house is this? Oh, darn. No. And as he shrugs, he has the knife in his hand. <laughs> oh, yeah. You guys just noticed that he's holding this, like, wickedly curved, extremely large knife. Oh, hey, hey. Hold it there, buddy. What the fuck is that? He looks down and... A little slow and Huey fucking like there. skittles back like, oh, kind of almost tripping on himself. Uh, no, no, I just woke up with this idea. That's not mine. Oh, God. Oh, God. I gotta calm down. <sighs> okay. All right. Why well, you got a knife? Yeah. And what you holding there? Is this a calculator? What the fuck is this? <laughs> I'm just like really studying it. Can it, I notice what it is? Can I tell if it's a calculator? Um, it... If it is a calculator, it's the weirdest calculator you've ever yeah. seen. It's some sort of square device that is half blown up. Can, can, can I can I take a look at that? Yeah, here. I, I grab it. I'm like, this. Wow, this this thing really blew up. Did you? Did I don't you do even remember it. No, oh. it was in my hand. Um, I try pressing the buttons or whatever. Yeah, you press the buttons and you know they press down, but nothing happens. Um, well, it seems to be broken. You got yourself a fancy little gadget. Got myself this reaper knife. Anything you like to share with the class, mate? Um, <clears throat> and I just quickly grabbed the rope from the first. Like I, I woke up and I landed on this this rope. It's a little singe at the end. Do, do you think we were tied up? Maybe, maybe I blew the rope off. It's burnt, wow. isn't it? Yeah. Is he singed or is it caught? You you look down at the uh, the rope. It's actually like many different like bits of rope mm-hmm. of different lengths. I, I'd say you can roll to investigate a mystery to kind of see like to examine it. So that's going to be rolling plus sharp. Myself. Yes. Yeah. All right. Oh, and here's the deal. So uh, monster of the week, the investigate a mystery move uh, has sort of like questions you would ask, like you know, but most of them pertain to monsters. Mm-hmm. I use the optional rule from the expansion Tome of Mysteries, where uh, if you succeed with a ten plus, you can ask either two general questions or one specific question. Uh, if you get mixed success, then you can ask one general question. Then six minus, I get to do whatever I want. Okay. And yeah, if you have so knowledgeable. Yeah, and if you have any moves that allow you to ask like extra questions, that's on top of the specific and general questions and all that. Okay. So, cool. uh, roll plus sharp. Uh, which is zero, so it's just going to be on the dice. I got a four. 
sucks yeah. mark experience because you yep. fucking failed yep. oh yeah <laughs> first experience of the game it is well that's so rope <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right let me see that what happens you uh you touch the rope and then suddenly the whole room just starts like to you randall just starts screaming and you let go of the rope and you are just like blinking rapidly so like a like a huge like blaring scream that knocks yeah. me off it my feet it was like moaning myrtle like, in that movie uh harry potter like with you the moment you like touch the rope the the whole room goes like black and white and then you hear this screaming and then you let go of the rope and you step back and you stagger a little bit and as you're like blinking and the world is like blurring you hear this voice in your head oh no Hey there, Randall. Randall, buddy, buddy. No, 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 no. Randall, but, are you hearing something? Uh, you all right there? Hang on, you lot. What you want? And uh, Randall, you oh, see fuck. sort of like appearing in front of you, and only you can see this. You, you see this like translucent figure of red skin and horns that peek out from a black hat wearing this like torn and shabby suit that just kind of fades away where like the waist would be and this uh figure looks at you and goes ah don't don't worry there randall it's your old friend charlie charcoal i just got a real good question for you here buddy uh what the fuck did you get us into this time i don't remember i don't know i thought this was you doing your meddling and was that you screaming bloody murder in me here i didn't hit scream anything i'm just screaming at you right now yeah i can hear you loud and clear uh, oh, uh, are you shy. talking to somebody in here i'm even losing my damn accent just talking to you see <sighs> all right if you're not gonna be any help then you can just sorry about it just... think... is he... is yeah he okay? the two of you him? just see him like talking to himself all um, right so so he's clearly cuckoo bananas. What about? Uh, I'm. Let me see I'm that fine. roll. And I, I hand him the roll. I don't want to do an investigate. Roll for it. Plus right. sharp. Sharp. So that's plus two. Now use base claw. <laughs> I'll cut my way to the investigate. I'll cut Give my way to the secrets. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12. Nice. Okay. So uh, you can ask uh, one specific question or two general questions. And is it only towards the rope? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the subject. Um, what oh, caused it to sear? Any, is there anything to give any kind of details on what caused it to burn? Was it a bomb? Was it fire? Was it like a burning blade that cut through it or some shit? I'm, I'm going to make that like a specific question. Okay. Uh, this rope, it's weird. You're examining all these different like pieces of rope, and it's definitely like singed at the ends, mm -hmm. but it, it doesn't look like cut. But it also doesn't look like it was held over a fire. It looks like it was almost like exploded, but at these ends. Got it. And then what was the other thing I could do? Or was that just one question I could ask? Um, you know, I'm, I, actually, I'm going to roll that back. That's going to be your general question. So you can ask one more question. Okay. Was there any, like, uh, I guess, area of effect? that that rope was near that we could kind of like, oh, it happened over there. Uh, you certainly know that, you know, Huey was sitting on top of it uh, when he woke up. Got it. Okay. And uh, as you look, you do see that there is uh, other bits of rope that were like behind where Huey was. And it looks like they were kind of like, almost like all these bits of rope were like thrown almost. Got it. Well, what it looks like some kind of explosive kind of burnt the rope off, I guess. Oh, um, let me see if I look around and I this, guess I notice that, that big pile. circle yeah. of sand is like, what, what is that? And um, I walk towards it very cautiously because mm -hmm. I kind of like scoot a little like as I'm passing Randall and Kevin, uh, I, I kind of still keep my distance. It's like, um, excuse me. And uh, I, I kind of kneel down. Do I see? Do I notice anything of the circle? Um, yeah, you're looking down and, um, it's basically like the, the wooden floor here is, uh, burned. Like it's a circle that's about the size of like a trash can lid. Does it look perfect? Mm, no. Oh, okay. I mean, this might be where the, I guess, what might have burned this thing. I mean, you said an explosion, right? It looks like it. And um, then I look at the device and I, can I investigate the device right now? Uh, yeah. All right, cool. We'll do investigate mystery. All right, cool. Sharp. Four, five, six. It's 
So that's a fail, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a fail. So mark experience. Uh, you're looking at this device, mm -hmm. and as you do, you're kind of just like flicking through it with your hand, and then like a spark hits your thumb, and you drop the device, and as you do, the whole room groans and shudders, and all of you guys sort of like shake to try to like keep your footing. And the wood floor that you guys are standing on cracks just slightly. Just enough for the device to bounce against the floor Can and I go. No. Okay. You 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 like pounce to grab it, but it just goes right into the crack. Ha! Oh. The device went in there? Yep. Nobody move. Oh god. The what, house. What, what, what was that? What's going on? And stop shaking. Oh god. Alright. You lad. Drop the rope. And I just quickly just drop a cup. And don't touch anything. Sorry for my little episode there. I've got a bit of a uh, passenger. Deep breath. Deep breath. Hey, are you are you okay, Kevin? Yeah. Uh, sort of. I just got a deep breath. Deep breath. Okay. You need to sit down there. Yeah, yeah, I need to sit down. Okay. Just and don't just... touch nothing. Because when I touch that rope... I've seen a lot of weird in me time, but that was something else. Kevin. Yes, Kevin. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so one of the things with your playbook is that you have a uh, weakness. The what, what do you call it? Pure drive. Yeah, the pure drive. So you are you have the the emotion fear is uh, very prevalent in you. I want yes. you to roll act under pressure to keep from having a panic attack. Okay. Oh God. <laughs> oh man. Oh no. In nombre de tu padre. Do you know Spanish now, Kevin? Yep. <laughs> Fluently, not well. <laughs> Two, seven. Okay. I have a seven. Damn, Ooh, barely. So barely. Oh, that's a mixed yeah. success, though. Yeah. I know. So Dr. Carpenter uh, steps back and puts his back against the wall, and he starts, like, breathing heavily. And uh, as he does, you know, he, he's kind of like, he steps back into a shadow, and as you guys sort of, like, look at him, you see he's, like, breathing heavily, and as he does, hair grows at the side of his face and on his arms before he takes another deep breath. And the hair goes back into his body. Like it retracts? Did, did, yes. Did, 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 you, did you just see that? <sighs> that okay. I did. Okay, we're good. We're good. We're good. Okay. Um. Okay. Can Can I? I'm like. Um. I guess I'm just gonna go look where that other rope yes, is. Yes. Yes. I. I advise that. What did I tell you two seconds ago? What I did. Don't touch anything till I've gotten myself a better look. And I'm gonna go over and look at the rope. Actually, I'm, I'm tr what I'm trying to do is I have the sight, and so I'm trying to look at starting at the rope. Um, but really just trying to scan the room from a, a panoramic view, trying to see... It. The sight is I can see the invisible, especially spirits and magical influences. Ooh. You may communicate with, maybe even make deals with the spirits you see, uh, and they give you more opportunities to spot clues when you investigate a mystery. So I'm going to investigate a mystery with the sight. That's okay. cheating. So How is that cheating? <laughs> So, Randall, because of your uh, spooky powers, you are able to communicate with the other side. And as you kneel down to touch the rope, you try to tap into those senses of yours. Roll again to investigate a mystery. Which, is this plus one with the sight? Is that how that works? Is that not like... Investigate a mystery is sharp. Investigate a mystery is just my sharp? sharp. Yeah, yeah, it's just your sharp. I get. Okay. Yeah. So you have fuck all on sharp. I do. I have sharp. I have hey. Nice. That's a 10. Fuck yeah. Very nice. <laughs> nice. Damn, that was hype as shit. <laughs> so you touch these ropes, and once again, you hear that screaming, but now you can kind of expect it. And the, the screaming goes from like a pure scream to like sniveling, and you hear, well, okay, how about this? With your 10, you can ask one specific question or two general questions. I'll try two general questions. One, is it general to ask where the screaming is coming from? I would say yeah, so. Yeah, that's general. Okay, where is the screaming coming from? And you hear a voice in your head go, it's coming from you there. Oh, don't sound like that. <laughs> no, it's not coming from your voice, you hear Charlie Charcoal say, as you feel his figure just kind of draped over your shoulders looking down at you. 
It's coming from your head, because I can hear it too, but no one else can. All right. Uh, and the second question is, do I feel a fourth presence in this room? B- besides Charlie Charcoal? Besides, well, mm. fourth being... Fifth, you mean. Fifth, yeah. fifth <laughs> presence. I mean, I was just counting everyone other than me. Okay. So fourth. Here's the deal. You, you kind of expand your perspective here as you're looking at these ropes. Actually, I feel like you're like closing your eyes as you're touching them, trying to like feel all that is around you. And as you ask if there's a fifth presence in this room, you feel, you feel a breathing, but all around you. Oh, Jiminy Christ. What? I don't think this is a normal house we're standing in, lads. What do you mean? And once again, the whole house creaks and shudders as you hear wood splintering and groaning. And then it settles once again. Guys? What what do you mean? Are we... I'm guessing we're not alone in here. Um. Is there a door? Anywhere we can kind of walk towards out of here, maybe? We need to get out of here. Nice and slow, like. You all hear a sound. Like a slithering. Or like bad plumbing. Something in the walls moving around you. But with the way that this attic is shaped, the sound is echoing through. What do you guys do? Uh, Did you, you guys all heard that, right? Yeah. I think there's something in the walls, gentlemen. And I like, clutch my, my skateboard. I pick it up from the ground and I like, clutch it. Um, do, do you see like a door in here? Or, um, or, or was there a window, you said? There's no window. There's no. It's just pure. Can we tell just, this is an attic? Wait, is yeah, I was going to ask. Can we tell if it's an attic? Yeah, you can tell there. this is an attic. And uh, there is a single light hanging from the ceiling where some of these uh, electrical cables are also uh, coming from. It's like a single fluorescent light that flickers. I want to follow the cable. I misspoke. There's one cable leading from the light down the ceiling, down the wall, and then through the floor. And there's all these other cables coming from these uh, two machines around the uh, burnt out circle that also uh, go across the floor and then like down it where it meets the wall. Do, do you guys, have you ever seen a machine like that? No, no exactly. I'm not familiar with that. No. Oh, oh, yeah, area. I'm going to go to touch it. He's like, well, I mean, and I take out my multi-tool. Roll to investigate a mystery. That's going to be plus one. Eight. All right. Ask uh, one general question. Um, where on this is Carmen San Diego? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where is she doing? Um, is this who we're fighting? Carmen San Diego? <laughs> um, she's been slithering in the she, walls. <laughs> she's like, mm. um, the can this machine look like it could be opened? Yes, it looks like there's you know, like several screws around like mm. a like a panel. And then as you reach your multi tool mm-hmm. toward like the screws and start. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Unscrewing it, you guys hear that same sound slithering through the walls. Um, Huey? Yeah? Take a couple of steps back from that machine. It's getting closer. Okay, Um, but it looks like this thing could be open. Maybe there's like a generator. It's slithering even further. Do you know what you're doing, lad? Uh, and I, I'm like slowly stepping back. Yeah, I... I, I, I know what I do with technology. Don't worry. Don't worry. This isn't for you. And he's pulling out. I have a point thirty eight revolver. <laughs> okay. Is that what it's called? A point thirty eight? Do they call it? No, it's just, just a thirty eight. Yeah, yeah, nobody says. Mm-hmm. Can we cut out when I said no, point? No, too bad. Mm-hmm. No, 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 that was just so you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, uh, so like, and I'm I proud out, that I pull I don't. out my nine millimeter pro grip. <laughs> yeah, he pulls out. Yeah, my character has a thirty eight, yeah. so he pulls it out, but he's like towards wherever he's hearing the slithering. And I pull out my double barrel shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> We're just pulling shit out of a. This ain't Looney Tunes. Yeah. I have a double barrel. Um, I I, uh, I put my 
night tool kit, my, my multi tool, and I pull out my nine millimeter pro grip handgun. Jesus, are you even old enough to have that? Yeah, I know how to use a gun. All right, but don't worry, gents. I'm ready. Oh my god, where'd you pull that from? I've had it on me since we woke up. Wow, that's. Uh, so you're backing up from the yeah. machine. I'm like pulling out my handgun, but you see that my hands aren't quivering. They're like calm. Did he open it? Did you open it? No, I was like turning to open it. Okay. Mm -hmm. and Would uh, one of you guys like to read a bad situation? Yeah, I'll read it. Roll plus sharp. <laughs> uh, I Do you want to read it? Uh, yeah, I'll read it. Oh, okay. yeah. Uh, I forgot. Roll I don't know how to read. Yeah. <laughs> Roll plus sharp. Six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. So uh, you get to ask one of these questions. What's my best way in? What's my best way out? Are there any dangers we haven't noticed? What's the biggest threat? What's most vulnerable to me? And what's the best way to protect the victims? If you act on this answer, you get plus one ongoing while the information is relevant. Hmm. What's the best way out? As all this is going on, you look to the other side of the room and you see a hatch that looks like it leads downstairs. There! There's a hatch right over there. Shh! How many times I gotta tell you lot not to move, not to touch things, and to keep your bloody voices down? Look. Something already knows we're in this damn room. We might as well make a run for the hatch. We can at least try to get out. And what I'm trying to tell you is... And is there creaking? Yeah, the walls begin creaking even further. You hear the slithering sound coming even closer. Do you guys sneak or do you run for it? Uh, as I hear that, I say, The room is the something. Go! And oh god, oh god, oh god. <laughs> <laughs> and we... Tr yeah, I'm gonna bolt for the... You're bolting? I'm bolting I'm for bolting. the door. You're bolting? Huey? Bolting. All right, all of you roll act under pressure. Oh, God. Oh, is that? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Pressure is plus Dude, four. I am Ooh. not yep. cool if you haven't got by my, my voice. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait. Do I have the minus oh. cool this? <laughs> Sorry. Dude, is our cool? Yeah, uh, it's your cool is act under pressure. So if your cool is minus one, you subtract one. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no. What did you get? I got a five total. Okay. I got a 12 natural. <laughs> I, got, I got a seven with the minus one. Wait, wait, let me see if I can do something. All right, else. we got all across the board here. <laughs> we're, we might and slightly he, make it. And fucking Huey did the best. <laughs> My dad taught me to survive, fuckers. <laughs> I have glasses too. You just don't yeah. see it. <laughs> There's not a lot of vigor in Randall, but he he shouts. It's all that drinking. <laughs> he should, No, it's because he's possessed. It's all kind that of. smoking. Um, and so he, <laughs> quote unquote, strikes. yells. Run! <laughs> <laughs> like, that's what it looks like. Yeah, no. Run. Yeah, he quickly pulls his, put, puts the handgun back in his backpack and he, like, barrel rolls, like, some almost some military drill kind of thing. Okay, so here's what happens because we kind of got act under pressures along the board. Uh, Huey, you barrel roll straight to the hatch. Like, you kn you know how to get the hell out of a situation. You pull it open and you're, you know, you already just, like, go straight down the staircase that descends down into the second floor. And as you're there, uh, Dr. Carpenter, you're rushing forward and your, you know, your legs are, like, hitting the stairs and you're about halfway in, halfway out before you hear the wall shatter. And you look behind you and you see us uh, Randall Solomon, who's right behind you, suddenly this shape just flicks out of the wall and smashes into Randall and hits him across the room. Uh, Randall, I'm going to need you to take five harm. Oh, Christ. Uh, Jesus. So that's like, what, one, two, three, four, five, like that? Yep. Holy shit. Yeah. By the way, you can take seven harm before you're dead. <laughs> And that was the end of Jesse's teeth. Horror campaign, everybody. Uh, Ugh. You smash against the other side of the attic. Ugh. And as you fall to the floor, you look up and you see emerging from this wall is this giant purple tentacle with suckers all along the base and what looks like this gaping maw full of sharp teeth at the end. And as it just smacked against you, Randall, it's looking throughout the room. And uh, here's the deal, Dr. Carpenter. Yes? You have a choice. You can either get the fuck out of there, or you can try to help Randall here. The logical side is saying run, but the human side is saying save. I am not Samuel Payne this time. <laughs> I will go and save. I fucked him over in rolling. I will come and save him. I'm uh, coming. I, I can, can I just add? Because I probably heard that loud thump, right? Yeah, you heard like like basically a wooden yeah. wall like shatter. 
Kevin, what was that? Oh god. Oh god. What's your guy's name again? R- Randall. <laughs> Randall. Randall! And I run back <laughs> oh, oh. I run uh, back up the uh, stairs. I, I look around. Do I? What do I see, real quick? Do I see You're any imminent stairs. danger on yeah. me? Uh, you you are down on the uh, the second floor. Uh, you see, there's two doors. You see that there's a staircase leading further down into what looks like a you know a first floor of this building. Uh, the walls are even more like cracked and old and wooden, and you see even more of these electrical cables. And as you're like looking around at all of this, uh, you see like there's a bit of wall where it's like even further cracked and you can see this like writhing purple mass underneath oh, oh, oh. and I, I like climb up you climb up a ladder? I climb, I follow him. So we both go okay. back up. Okay, so. But uh, I, I don't climb all the way up. I climb up just enough to like poke my head out mm-hmm. of like the ha- the open hatch. Mm-hmm. And I guess. And I'm okay. fully up. All right, so uh, if you want to uh, rescue Randall here, roll act under pressure. Oh God, here and, we go. And uh, Huey, do you want to help him out? Uh, yeah, I'm going to shoot at it. Okay. Um, so Huey, you have the, uh, the ability to like automatically help, right? Yeah, power of heart. Okay, cool. Uh, can you explain what it is? Uh, yeah, so the power of heart says when fighting a monster, if you help someone, don't roll plus cool. You automatically help as though you rolled a 10. Nice. Okay, so helping someone in this game basically gives them a plus one to their roll. So, um, Dr. Carpenter, how could I forget? <laughs> roll- God, I love this name. Yeah. <laughs> roll act under pressure. Okay. Um, I got nine minus one, so eight plus one from the helping, so back to a nine. So still a mixed success. Okay. So you rush forward to Randall's uh, just like shaking frame as you grab him. And as you do, this tentacle like rears up and opens up its gaping maw to like grab at you. But Huey pulls out his handgun and just starts shooting at this thing. Like a boss. <laughs> and the tentacle rears back in pain. Uh, how much harm does the, well actually you weren't rolling the kicks match, you're more yeah. just like distracting it. So let's see, that was still a mixed success. What should I do? You trip and fall on your face. <laughs> So, Dr. Carpenter, <laughs> you rush toward Randall Solomon. Uh-huh. You you grab his uh, just body, just out of it. For, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's out of it body. Uh, he's not dead yet, no. but he's still. But I'm, I'm I'm like prone on my back though, right? Like yeah, I got is, hit and he's smacked fucked. and he's, fell like he's pretty hard. Right. Internally, yeah, you oh, got you, you got messed up by that tentacle. Great. And uh, Dr. Carpenter, as you grab him, and as Huey is firing his gun to distract the tentacle, you pick up uh, Randall, hoist him over your shoulder, and start running for the stairs. And as you do, the tentacle rears up, and as it opens up its maw, it swipes at you and just barely scratches at your shoulder. Uh, Take one harm as one of its uh, sharp teeth slice through your clothes. And as I see them coming, I just like, I pull ah. out the gun and I slide down the, the ladder to kind of make way for him. All right, uh, Dr. Carpenter, you and Randall just get right down. Uh, what do you guys do? Uh, well, as we go down, I, with what energy I have left, say to them, close the hatch, the hatch. <laughs> and I got like, I, I kind of like, we, I'm the last one to get down. I fucking like slam it back up. You slam the hatch shut. Yeah. And as you do, you hear like this like fumbling around in the attic above you. And then you hear that same slithering sound. And Huey, you look toward the large crack in the wall with that writhing purple mass and you see it slide down. Oh, um. And I like tap everybody. He's like, oh, it, 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 it's right there. So you have uh, two doors and stairs leading to the first floor. What do you do? I'm like I'm like having a panic attack right now, or like something's ha- kicking in on me. Okay, uh, yeah. roll act under pressure. Kevin, are you okay? Oh God, do you want some of my Xanax? <laughs> He's Kevin, our guy. Look at was it my... Oh, two. Oh no, oh, no, it's no. a two. This is going so bad. This so is bad. two. <laughs> As you guys see this uh, this tentacle coming further down the crack, uh, Dr. Carpenter, you start breathing heavily. What's going? And, what's happening? What's going on? And all of this brown hair starts forming along your oh. arms and along your hand and along your face, and your mouth actually starts extending oh out from God. your face. And you all witness Dr. Kevin Carpenter transforming into a werewolf. What's that sound like? Oh god, I was gonna do that monster noise again. Is that cool? Yeah, yeah, go ahead, do sure, mix it up. <laughs> I 
think you can mix it up. You, you, can, you can mix it. I can't really. I don't know how to do like a. I'm like. I say how can I? Like a what? Do you want Chris to be your wolf form? <laughs> you want to be a wolf? <laughs> All right. Arr. Well, uh, Mom, I want to. Like, I've already taken Kevin's name. I don't want to make it sound lame. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Chris. We have your headshot. We have your information. Uh, <laughs> thanks for coming in. <laughs> Oh. Your audition was <laughs> Don't call us, we'll call you <laughs> Yeah, don't call us Do <laughs> you want to add a sound effect? Let me try, let me try Alright, here Let's go fucking Yeah, fuck it <laughs> Okay, there you go Wait, wait, keep going Okay You pick me up, lad, lad, lad Pick me up, lad, pick me up Give me a light huh? And I like, I like, just like I don't point the gun at him But I'm like huh, Like just have it here at the ready Like Oh, Kevin? Doctor! Please! And I grab one of the door handles. Okay. Uh, which one? Right or left? Uh, let's go left. Okay. okay. You crack open the left door. Uh, it, it's not locked. It opens up right behind you. Uh, you see this werewolf standing there looking at you menacingly. And as you do, you see the wall behind the werewolf start cracking open as this tentacle seems to be trying to break its way through. Oh, and I like, I like, I like, I grab <laughs> Randall, like, we gotta go, we gotta go, we gotta go, and I push him inside the, in the, the next room. Door. You push him inside, uh, do you, do you wait for the werewolf to come in with you, or are you closing uh, the door on it? I'm not closing the door, because I, f I feel like, uh, Huey knows that that thing behind him is a bigger threat, but I'm, like, walking back slowly, like, with the gun still at the ready, like, Kevin, um, I know we probably, probably didn't get off on the right start, but you want to look behind you? Uh, and I'm like still like slowly pushing back the very injured Randall. So Randall, you get pushed inside of this room, and uh, fr from your space on the ground, you look up and you see that there are beds in here. Multiple beds on uh, metal wire frames. Uh, the mattresses bare, no sheets, no blankets, uh, stained. And you see attached to all these frames are handcuffs and chains. And as you are in here, you start hearing the sounds of those screams again. And you hear that other voice in your head going, Oh, God. There's, there's a lot of those screams in here. Charlie, oh. Charlie, what fresh hell is this place? I think you just answered your own question there. This might be hell. Um, what, is, what does Werewolf Kevin do? Uh, well, Werewolf Kevin licks himself. <laughs> is the door closed or they left it open? No, we left it open. Yep. Yeah, like I, I'm like slowly backing up, not brandishing the gun. So I fucking you. like like march in slowly, but like the door frame isn't big for me. But I like just kind of just force my way through it, so I'm like oh. breaking through the door. Do you have control? No. Nope. Okay. This is an animal. This is okay. this is not me being in control. Cool. So I'm ready to like strike. <laughs> And I do that. I, I like just point the gun uh, right, right between his mouth. Well, not in it, but like just yeah. right to it. Kevin, uh, I I don't know what's going on, but this is not the time for us to fight. Or or oh, wow, you seem like a really hungry dog. Uh, and I'm like Randall. Uh, Randall looks over at uh, the werewolf, um, and I'm going. I think I'm going to try and. Uh, <laughs> okay, so all right, let's go back to investigating this bed. Um, <laughs> well, he's already got a gun on him, right? Now oh. you're gonna stop this guy. Well, I, all I've got is a gun. So, <laughs> well, oh, yeah. have you never seen a werewolf? Guns. Movie? guns are usually the, <laughs> the, the solution to werewolves. <laughs> I mean, if Huey wants to try to, you know, like convince him to calm down, he can certainly roll for that. I'm gonna roll for that. Um, Kevin, Kevin, uh, Doctor Kevin, uh, I don't know. That might be metagaming, who knows? I'm like, look, right now, I, I am not the biggest danger. Look right behind you, okay? That, that, we should not, we should go after that. Okay. Roll convince. I got it. My, my fucking werewolf okay, hands uh, in the you air. You mean manipulate someone? Yeah. Yep. Nine. So on a mixed success with manipulate someone, uh, they'll do it, but only if you do something for them right now to show that you mean it. What did you tell him? Uh, right, it's like, we are not the biggest threat here. Look right behind you, that thing is... The biggest threat here. Yeah, we drop your gun. What? Drop your gun. And I just like. It. But this is my dad's gun. Drop it in front of him right now, you stupid wit. <laughs> and I like, I just like, I like, just drop it. And I put my hands up. 
So werewolf Kevin Carpenter uh, looks toward Huey and raises his werewolf claws, and then as he sees him drop his gun, he, confusion kind of like hits his monstrous face. And then as Huey points behind him, he turns around and he sees this giant purple tentacle bashing against the wooden wall. You can see it kind of writhing through the crack and it, it breaks through this wooden wall and suddenly you see this tentacle with its giant gaping maw going through the room looking around. Kevin Carpenter, you gain yourself back. You suddenly come back to your senses as you realize the danger that you're in. So am I no longer a werewolf? You're a werewolf, but you're in uh, control. Oh. <laughs> I can't speak. I'm still just, I can only speak like whatever a wolf makes. What do you do? I look right behind <laughs> me. <laughs> yeah, just do that. That sounds great. Good. Yes. This yeah, sounds just good. go ahead. What happened? Oh, Kevin? Oh. Yeah. And I pick up my gun. It's like, that, that, that thing is, is, and I look, I trip it over to Rhino. It's like, well, it kind of fucked him up. Uh, I think Rhino's just fucking around with it's the bed. slithering towards you guys. Get inside, get inside. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking lunge right at it and I try to claw it real quick. You're going to attack it? I'm going to attack it. Okay, we'll oh, kick some ass. Oh, shit. Right. And, and when I see that, can I fire Oh, I have a negative one. one. Oh, I have a negative one. It's not good. Uh, can I at least oh, help him? Yeah, you can help yeah. him. Wait, Thank can you. I use my moves? Yeah. I'm going to also Is this how my moves work or no? Uh, you don't have like a like combat move. This yeah. is just like you straight add, up kicking you, some you ass. You add those extra after to see if you actually oh, succeed. I'd also like to raise my 38 to help out. Okay, so uh, eight, seven, eight, because I helped him. Yeah, so you helped him. So that's a uh, plus one because you got the automatic help. Eight. Can I help? Uh, uh -huh. Even if you help out, that still won't raise him like above a ten. So you would just be putting yourself in danger potentially. So I'm good eight. then. I think they're all right. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm I'm hang over here. Yeah. Yeah, so but this bed looks pretty yeah. interesting. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna hang right. out. On no, no. I'm gonna hang up by the wall, by the bed. <laughs> okay, I'm not touching this fucking bed. So on a mixed success, we kick some ass. You and whatever you're fighting deal harm to each other. Okay. So cool. uh, what harm do you have with your claws? Yeah. Oh, so base is uh, yeah base is two, and then I have the extra add one to base, mm -hmm. and then I have claws of the beast, which uh, gets me another one plus, so four. So your claws do four harm. Four harm. Yeah. You rush toward this thing, and as it does, it like leans toward you. Can I make the noise? Yeah. I'm in dog form. Your claws slice into this thing, and as it does, it's like writhing about, and you're like holding on as you're like slicing through this mess. And as your claws pierce through this purple skin, this like green, slimy blood oozes out, and it hits against the floor, and the floor bubbles. And as you're like holding on to this thing, suckers appear on the, uh, the flesh, and one of them grabs your leg, and you feel dozens, if not hundreds, of tiny teeth piercing into you, and it takes this uh. and it takes this bite out of you. Uh, take two harm. Two harm. Jesus. <laughs> At least you didn't get bashed across the room. I'm still okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll let you hear that. You... You let go of the tentacle and like take your claws out. And as you do, you see you got this thing good. Like it is messed up. It is bleeding heavily. And it's now just shaking across the room and it's slowly slithering back into the wall. What do you guys do? This is in the wall in the hallway outside the room is yes. where it is. Um, does it look like it's retreating? Yes. Uh, did can you I get run, a good shot? Can I run you get it again? I mean, I shot at it. I could. I didn't deal damage. I shot at it to, like, I guess, get its attention so he could actually land a blow. Yeah. If you want to shoot at it to actually deal damage, you can. But that I, will expose I would you to limp. danger. Dude, what if we reservoir dog that shit? <laughs> get all our guns. Get all our guns. I was going to say I'm going to limp towards the door and say let's finish it off. Okay. I agree with that. I'm okay. With all right. So, I limp towards the door and I say let's finish it off. Okay. So I'm moving the spotlight over to uh, Randall here. Randall, what do you do? I limp towards the door with my arm in my hand, and I lean towards the doorway with pull my 38 and be like, All right, then. Let's finish this. Uh, are we actually going to shoot it? Do as you're told. Oh, bitch, you ain't my dad. <laughs> I get, like, all serious for a second. And I, I pull out my gun, and I actually help him as well with another shot. Okay, so you're more, like, distracting instead of trying to deal mm -hmm. damage to the tentacle. Yeah. Cool. Hey, so Scooby. 
You know how to use that double barrel steel, yeah? And I pick it up <laughs> in werewolf form. Okay, so Randall roll kicks some ass. And you get a plus one because uh, Huey is helping you out here. That's a nine plus one. Ten. Good partner. Plus one from Huey, so that's eleven. That's eleven. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we kick some ass. We get a ten plus. Uh, you get to choose an extra effect. Uh, you take plus one four to give plus one four to another hunter. You inflict terrible harm, so you add plus one harm. You suffer less harm, uh, so minus one harm, or you force them where you want them. Um, I would suggest take the less harm because he will get a shot on you. Oh yeah, he's gonna hurt me, right? Yeah, yeah. You guys trade blows yeah. when it comes to kicking some ass. Okay, you suffer. I'm, I, yeah, good point. I was gonna help him because he's also shooting him. Well, I have. I was doing something a little. He's gonna see yeah. if he actually hits him, but for you, I, I, I'd suggest. I'll take less him. harm. Okay. Just get him. Uh, my gun does two harm close reload loud. I don't know what that means. Uh, it it does two harm. It does two harm. Great, yeah. cool. Okay, so Randall, you take out your uh, pistol, and as uh, Huey is firing more bullets at it, not to like. Ah. And even as its bullets just, just kind of just like slicing through the skin, not directly impacting, uh, the tentacle is looking around. Uh, it, the, the, it seems like the sound of the gun is messing with its senses, and you take out your revolver and you fire off this loud shot right into the gaping maw of the tentacle, and it opens up and pounces towards you, and the bullet impacts it right as it's about to hit you, and it just <laughs> explodes. Right both, in my face. Both of you are covered in this green, bloody goo. It hurts and sizzles just slightly, but you don't take any harm as the remains of this tentacle just falls to the floor. Yeah, reminds me of me wife's cooking. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Never mind. Says, Everybody, and is it? And that's it. It's like quiet now, or what? Well, he still has to fire. Oh you, yeah. You see the the remains of the tentacle, like you blew off kind of like the the end of it. The remains slither back into the wall. Uh, do you want to fire at the remains? Or? Yeah. Okay. Roll kick so, ass. Well, can I do two things? Mm -hmm. All right. Cool. So let me roll my kick ass first. No, since I helped him, can I help him again while I'm still firing? Mm. You didn't give me help. I mean, he helped yeah. me with this thing, and I feel like that explosion kind of ended our yeah action. Uh, Six, seven, eight, nine. Minus one, eight. Yeah, so uh, you take out your shotgun and you well, blast this ten. I was going to do two things. What, what's the other thing? I was going to jump on it, claw it, and shoot it. You can only do one. You can only do one. Then I'll do the claw because that does the most damage. I don't care if I take it. Fight me, bro. Yeah. Okay, so once again, you leap at this tentacle and you start slicing at it again. Yeah. Let's see, that was an eight, so that's just a mixed success. So yeah, once again, more yeah. of these like suckers appear and, and latch on onto your, onto your other leg. Take another two harm. Okay. And As you, you what four, right? I've done four damage to it, so a total of eight already, plus whatever you guys did. You slice into it, you slice off even more of the tentacle, and as you do, you slice off the bit that's about to go into the wall, and you look into the crack and you see even more of the tentacle just slide further down into the house's foundations. But now in the middle of this floor, you have this segment of purple tentacle covered in these suckers that are now twitching in death spasms. Ugh. Kevin, are you okay? <laughs> oh, that's right, you're a dog. Uh, <laughs> and I, and I kind of <sighs> rush over. But I'm like of, in pain, so I'm like... Yeah. <sighs> Here, just just relax. I think there were some beds in the other room, uh, and I walk down to see to like I guess investigate the tentacle. Uh, yeah, roll investigate a mystery. Can I uh, use my um, oops? <laughs> can I use my oops? Oh, uh, can you can you explain what that move is? All right, so oops. <clears throat> says, <laughs> if you want to stumble across something important, tell the keeper. You will find something important and useful, although not necessarily related to your immediate problems. Do I find something? You are looking into this tentacle, and like, as you do, you're like, you, you see like the suckers death spasming, and you look inside, and you see like all these like tiny, tiny teeth. Uh, just along the rim and further down into the sucker, almost like it's its own like mouth. And, and it, it creeps you out, but you also see a piece of paper that is uh, inside this sucker. Ooh, uh -huh. Bloop. Oh, 
You just pluck it out of there? I just plug that bit. It's dead, right? It, it's quivering, but you just kind of Okay, like... so I did... Uh, so, okay, it's still alive. So I take out my multi-tool, and uh, it, most multi-tools I would hope have like a, a plier setting. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, uh... And I use the gun to kind of like keep the suckers, like point them down and be like, uh... And I try to get okay. okay, with that, yeah, yeah. I would say you'd be able to pull out the <laughs> paper without getting harmed. Um, yeah. So you pull it out, and you see this like paper that's just like drenched with this like drool. Um, and like wipe it off, just like. And, and as you're looking at this paper, you see there's like writing on it. Most of the writing on this paper is smeared and illegible, but you see two things. One looks like this weird symbol. It looks like a U with a line that splits the middle and other like dots around it. it it doesn't look like someone was trying to take like the the roman alphabet and make this it looks more like just this weird symbol that just kind of looks like that mm-hmm. and you also see uh, a bit of writing at the bottom that says with this our curse be broken oh uh, wow and i like i wipe off as much as i can of the goop and uh do i have a phone on me like a cell phone? I would think, you know, a high no. schooler? No. Oh, fuck. My dad's going to kick my ass. I lost the phone again. Uh, <laughs> and I'm like, okay. Um, I kind of just kind of like march towards you guys. Like, <laughs> I, do, I have, do I have like, a, since I'm going to school or something, whatever the fuck. Mm-hmm. Would I have like a notebook in my backpack? Um, You look in your backpack and you see beside your like skateboard, there's nothing else in there. Motherfucker. Uh, okay. And I just, I just like neatly fold the paper and I put it in my pocket. Oi, what you got there, lad? Got yourself a prize, did you? Um, yeah. And I uh, take it out of my pocket again. Because I don't know you actually saw me take it. Um, and I said, um, well, and I turned over to show them. He's like, this piece of paper came out from the, um, the, the little thing over there, the tentacle. It has this weird looking U symbol. He slowly, unceremoniously just takes it out of his hands. Oh. Like interrupting him. Yeah. And looks at it. Hey, Marmaduke, how long is this party trick of yours normally last, yeah? <laughs> and then like all the hair retracts back into me, but my wounds are still are still there. But you know, it's just kinda every just like all my body structure and everything is going back to like a normal human. Oh, so, oh. there we go. Sorry about that. Yeah, it's all right there. Oh, what my legs. Mo- <laughs> motley crew, we make yeah. Just give me a second, lads. I'm going to take a seat because I am very hurt still, right? Mm-hmm. I'm going to try and take a pop a squat on one of them beds. Yeah. Is mm-hmm. that going to be fine? I think I'll yep. join you on that sitting. Ugh. You mind taking your own bunk? Yeah, sure. Which one? You want? There's <laughs> two. I'm on one. So take, I'll take the other. Yeah. They, oh, yeah, no, there's yeah. more than two beds in here. I thought you said there were two. No, there are multiple beds. Yeah, there's like, uh, you look around and there's like five of these beds that have just kind of been crammed in this room. All right. I guess I'll just um, watch the door then. Yeah, that's fine. Aye, Charlie. And he looks at the paper and he's going to ask Charlie, you ever seen anything like this here? All right, roll uh, investigate a mystery. I pull out my gun to help. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> They give me what I want. All right, that is uh, a ten. Wow, nice. Okay, so uh, Charlie, what the fuck is this? <laughs> Charlie, I'm, I'm gonna say this is your uh, you know specific question. Okay, yeah. So you hear Charlie's voice uh, in the back of your mind. <laughs> oh, buddy. Oh, buddy. You that... always sound like that, yeah. <laughs> no, what? I just. <laughs> He sounded different, that's all. D- yeah. Should we go stick up with this shit? <laughs> hey, you normally sound a little more sh- sticky than that. More, more sticky. A little okay. stickier, more sticky, yeah. A little sticky, okay. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I know what that is. There I know what are. that is, see? Hey, I know what that is. That's your voice. That's a demonic that- rune. A demonic what? A demonic rune. That's... That's a summoning rune. Ah. Every time I hear your voice, I just I keep I keep wanting to go into your accent. I hate it. I hate being stuck in your body like this. I feel feel ah. Ah, uh, well, tough titties there, Damon. You took everything else from me. At least I get to keep my sexy accent. So, my summoning room. 
Uh, like a demonic one. Yeah. Calling your cousins and brothers and sisters, that's what it's for, you. Yeah? Oh, that, this isn't my brand of demonic. I keep losing my voice while I'm in you. Ah. Get over yourself, all right? If it's not your brand, then whose brand is it? Nah. I don't know. And if I don't know, that means it's older than me. Yeah, all right. Take five, then, yeah? Hey, lads. And I turn around, like, looking away Can from I the... Can I see the piece of paper? Yeah, of course. According to me passenger, it might be something called a uh, summoning rune. Something older than... Well, the demonic rituals or something, I don't know. And as you pass the paper, you hear Charlie Charcoal go, Why does it seem familiar? Can I use my weird science to, like, see what kind of paper and anything? Like, anything, would that help? Mm, no, no, weird science is more, like, for you to, like, make, like, weird science devices. <laughs> Got it. Your weird science it, is used to make weird science. Yeah. We, <laughs> is there anything in the room I could use to do my weird science? There are beds and mattresses in this room. Dude, what guy that shit? And handcuffs and chains. Hmm. chains. Is there any windows in this room? We're on the second floor now. There are. Uh, there's actually one window, and the curtains are drawn. Okay. What do we see outside the window? Do you open the curtains? Hey, guys, I'm going to let some fresh air in. You open the curtain... And you see that there is a brick wall. Okay, not gonna get help on that. And I close it. <laughs> Nothing like a lovely view, eh? Are we like in a, an abandoned house or something? With a monster? I would say more haunted would be a fitting thing. Well, I do apologize. When we were upstairs, I did think it was a haunted house or a monster house. And you see that movie? Yeah, I have, as a matter of fact. Underrated. It is. Truly. My dad doesn't let me watch movies. Hmm. I died before that movie came out. I didn't ask you. Look, you said it's a, what is it again, a ruin or? It's a summoning rune, he said. Well, like magic? Yeah, it would be my base case. Well, Black magic. Magic is not my forte, but doesn't it usually require some kind of burning or fire? What if we lit it on fire? Maybe it'll have an effect. What was that room we was in? The attic? Yeah, wasn't there some sort of circle? Oh yeah, circle. that was that the um, that scorch mark, and oh, and the rope was also burned. And there was that device that I thought was explosive. That device fell through a hole in the floor. It should be on this floor somewhere, unless it went. No, it should be on this floor. Well, we have to go outside of the hallway then. I mean, we haven't checked the right door. Now it goes. And he puts his and finger on his nose. nose. <laughs> well, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm going to use. Um, can I investigate Hold on. Hold on. for the for the burning debris or what, like the the, the char smell? Um, with my shape shifting skills. Oh, oh, oh Trudy, yeah, yeah. Trudy, yeah. you can shape shift like to yeah. hand. Yeah. Well, yeah. I can turn into fucking anything, or just the, I can no. shape shift oh. into. But you one can of the things into a is werewolf. I have superior senses, smell of a wolf, oh, so I okay. could smell where it went. Like that, that burnt mark. Oh, he smelled the device yeah. already. Okay, so, roll to investigate a mystery. So sharp, and then I can use shape shift, right? Because that's a plus one? Yeah. Your, your mouth... Yeah, you gain one plus one to investigate a mystery. Yeah. Your mouth and nose extends as you oh, sniff oh, the air, oh, trying oh. to find the source of this burning smell. Oh, wow. Or if it leads somewhere. <laughs> Eleven. Fuck plus yeah. three. It's fourteen. Where exactly did that fucking thing go? The tentacle? No, the, uh, the device. The device, the other half of that device that fell through. Okay, so looking around the room, you can kind of s guess that the device didn't fall into this room, but it most definitely fell into the other room. All right. The right room. You said there was a door over there, right? Yeah, um, I just chose the, the closest room to me, the left one, and but the right one we haven't really opened yet. <sighs> Get your guns ready, boys. Until I walk over to the door. Uh, I stand, like, kind of behind everyone. Mm -hmm. Kind of, like, looking back to see if nothing creeps up behind us. And I, I kind of, like, I'm, like, my back is towards the wall. But, like, look where the door is. Mm -hmm. So I kind of open it just slightly. And then, like, kind of use my foot to open the rest. So that's why I'm not in the range of the doorway. You creak the door open. And you see inside what looks like a lab. You see a table with machines and beakers filled with this mysterious liquid. Uh, and in the middle of this table is this old computer. You see 
on the other side of the room, nailed into the wall, are four vices, like clasps, that are positioned in a perfect way to hold someone's wrists and feet against the wall. Jesus, this is a laboratory. I don't think he had anything to do with it, mate. You also see another one of those weird machines that look kind of like a generator. Uh, It looks blown out. And you also see the uh, cables that you saw in the roof leading down from the ceiling, down these walls, into all of these different machines. The, the, The burners, the computer, this weird machine. And it just kind of like spreads along the walls in this weird erratic patterns like veins and an arm before sinking further into the floor. Looks like those are generators upstairs. And they just keep on trickling down, don't they? Huh, um... Well, I, I guess I could take a look at the one that's blown out. Yeah, I'd say give it a look. This ge- These two generators must be generating power, not just for this lab, but something else below us. Well, won't you help the lad? Last time he looked at something himself, we got eaten by a kraken. I'm kind of interested to see what they were working on in here. I don't know if I don't know if I told you guys this, but I'm a scientist. <laughs> oh, wow! Yeah, there's a long story to my thing, but basically, my work caused me to be what I am. You've oh. been leaving out a whole lot, haven't you? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> uh, so I take out my multi tool and I go to the generator. Yeah. Whatever. So you already know how to open yeah. one of these. I would hope um, so. So roll to investigate a mystery. Okay. While he's doing that, I'm going to go look at whatever was being worked on with, like, you know, the whole chemistry and all the paperwork and all that stuff. Okay. Nine. Um, Oh, mystery? Sorry. Yeah. Uh, Hey, ten. Nice. So, uh, once again, uh, two general questions or one very specific? Uh, What moves the plot along? No. (laughs) Just just, just how about this? Ask a question and I'll tell whether it's general or specific. Um... Does the does the machine or the the inner workings of the machine look, I guess, similar to like maybe like a car or an engine? Does it look far fetched? Okay, I'll say that's a general one. Okay. Uh, you look inside this machine and it looks weird. It, it doesn't look like purely mechanical, like you know, like a car's engine or something like that. Uh, you look inside. Not only does this look like like advanced, but you also see symbols similar to the one that you saw in the paper but also e- even like more of these like symbols and like different shapes on some of the pieces of machinery inside this thing and you can kind of immediately tell that maybe this isn't just a generator maybe this machine is for something else uh, and do I, I got another general question right yes um do the runes uh, seem well. You you stated that the thing was inactive, right? Yes. Do the runes seem like they were carved in, or can I like erase them with my thumb or something? Uh, these runes are carved in. In fact, they they seem almost like roughly carved in. Like not like these parts were made with these runes, like in a factory. More like these parts were made and then someone carved the runes in afterward. Got it. They just spread all over the place, or uh, in like certain points, mm-hmm. it, it's like different pieces of the machinery have these runes, and like the runes, like they have like this like burned mark around them as well. Okay, um, I open it. I said, "Hey, uh, guys, um, remember that rune that was on the paper?" Uh, and I kind of like open up so that everyone can see the things like this. Um. This thing has these runes all over the place, so this might be something more than just a simple generator. Um, Meanwhile, uh, Dr. Kevin Carpenter, how are you investigating the uh, the table with the, the beakers and the computer? Just tasting I, every single one. Mm, <laughs> this is science. <laughs> no, um, I'm looking to see the paperwork that was on left. Like, you know, like most, most of the times they have like their notes laying about. As well as I'm using my senses to smell if I'm familiar with any of the chemistry that's being used. Okay. Uh, you don't have to roll just to look at the papers. I'll just uh-huh. do that real quick. Uh, you look at the papers and there are a bunch of like printouts with like, you know, uh, you know computer text. Mm-hmm. Um, and as you're looking over, it looks like experiment files. Okay. 
Um, you see that there's, you know, like it, it's very uh, clinical. It's like test subject one, uh, this, this. And as you're sort of like reading into it, 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 it starts getting more and more disturbing. Test subject one, failure. Test subject two, visceral failure. Test subject three, partial success, then legs exploded. And as you're reading them, it, it's weird, but the files start referencing your work. You, you see that there is there are some tests where they take the chemical that you were using and try to instill it into the experiment, and those don't work. And in fact, just cre uh, you, you see that the results just create these like abominations that have to be put down by uh, associate one. And a as you're reading through more and more of these, uh, you get to one uh, that is today's date. And it says, uh, we'll acquire test subject today. And it's a readout of the experiment that will be performed. It reads, we'll combine science with magic through newly discovered runes to create ritual. Guys? I may have just discovered something. What you got there, Doc? And I pop my head out from like the, the as I'm tinkering with this machine, like, what? I don't know who is doing this, but they've somehow gotten a hold of my work. But they're going beyond what I've done. And what might that have been, yeah? They're trying to fuse science with magic. I don't know how that's possible, but I think what we're fighting was once human. You talking about the calamari out there in the walls? Makes sense. I turned into a wolf. That could have been an octopus DNA they fused. But wait, they went beyond. Wait. They're infusing magic somehow. So you're telling me that they're making... They're breeding monsters? It looks like it. the papers are saying test trials. And each one is getting worse and worse. But this one was today. And it's saying... Fuse science with rune magic for ritual. And you pick up the paper and a small square falls from the table and onto the floor. You pick it up and you see that it is a Polaroid picture of Huey. All three of you look at this picture and it's Huey uh, walking through a park and it's pretty clear that this picture was taken without Huey's knowledge. Huey, were you at the park recently? Um, I mean, the last thing I remember, I was I was walking home from uh, from the science uh, laboratory. Yeah. What laboratory? Oh well, um, at at my my high school, we we were pretty well funded, and we have this laboratory where uh, we tinker with things, uh, engineering, science, biology. I'm I'm a club member there. What was you working on in your science club? Oh, um, well, <laughs> uh, I don't really like to talk about it, but, um, uh, I dabble with, like, animals. Uh, I want to become a, a veterinarian. Uh, so we were just studying, like, the way different animals interact and, you know, breed and such. What animal were you studying? Uh, I was looking up amphibians, uh, aquatic creatures. Jesus, Mary and Joseph, I'm getting a headache here. Why? Well, you've got your little marine biology experiment in your science club there. The doctor over here apparently has been dabbling a bit more advanced in the same sort of same sort of scientific dance. And then you've got me. Black magic's basically the only thing that keeps me standing right here before you. You said you were studying aquatic? Yeah. I was studying genes, splicing, human evolution. Isn't that illegal? Technically. And so at that point, the house starts to shudder once again, oh. this time shaking even further. You all just have to grab onto something in order to stay on your feet. Oh, one, one of the beakers falls to the ground and shatters oh, and the liquid bubbles onto the floor. And you guys hear like the walls start to creak again as you hear that slithering sound once more. Oh no, guys, I think that 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 Talk to Puss thing found us. I can't face that thing again right now, Ron. I ain't gonna make it. Is there another way out of this? Is there another way out of this uh, lab or just the way we came? Just the way you came. Lock. Um, well, I mean. So, just to recap, 
Someone Recap has real quick. just so I have this understanding. Someone has stolen my work, is using the black magic that you're familiar with, stealing your work, and has fused all three of our works together to create this demonic humanoid amphibian octopod sort of creature. And it's living in this house. Wait, what do you mean my work? I, I'm just a simple high school kid. Someone's been keeping an eye on you. Look at the Polaroid. There's no one else here but us. Oh, oh my God. Is that is that the same clothing I'm wearing today? Yes, it is, it is the exact same clothing. In fact, yeah. this looks recent. Aren't those the same clothes? Yeah, home. Wait, was somebody following me? I don't know. I don't know. And as I keep looking towards the thing, I'm like, I'm trying to figure out like who the subject was. Is there anything? Uh, can I roll investigate to see who the roll subject was? Roll investigate a mystery. All right. I'll right, show you sharp. And I'll use veteran doctor's cum. Nice. <laughs> nice. Nice. Good callback. Good callback. I back. am a doctor. Can I use my gun to help him? <laughs> Jeez, why is that the new thing? Because <laughs> I always find a way to be a support character. I'll have you know, I went to Irvine. <laughs> <laughs> Got my degree in Irvine. Let's go. Six. Oh, my God. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Oh, my God. Okay. Ask your question. Yeah. Um, are any of the files... On the desk that I've skipped over that shows me who the subject was or that leads to any kind of clue to what this octopod thing is? Ask your question. What moves the plot along? (laughs) How what do I have to do to get out of here? (laughs) Ask your question. Why do fools fall in love? (laughs) That's a good question. Here's my next question. What's love got to do with (laughs) it? Okay, here's what happens. You're, you're searching through these files the, mm-hmm. as the house is creaking, and you're just trying to find something, anything. And as you're kind of just like shuffling through them very hurriedly, uh, the, one of the papers falls to the floor, and you bend down to pick it up. And as you do, you like you go to get back up, and you bash your head against the table. And as you're rubbing your head, your hand rubs against a post-it that had been put under the table. And you grab the post-it, and it's a computer password. Ooh. Hello. What do we got here? The password <laughs> is revert1. Revert1. Is that computer still on? Is that computer working by any chance? Uh, let me see. And I see. It doesn't look like a fucking computer. I could just press the button. Yeah, you press the button and it starts like turning on Windows XP. <laughs> and as it turns <laughs> on, you guys hear that slithering sound coming closer. Oh, uh, what log- are you going to do? You better do it fast. Right, the right, login right. screen pops up. All right, perfect. Is then, there any kind of, uh, sorry, really quick, since they're doing stuff actively, mm-hmm. is there sh- uh, anything in the lab, like a kind of an equipment, like something electrical or something with a f- torch on it, anything that could be used as an advanced weapon? Hmm. Oh, that's good. Ooh, I got an idea too. Thank you for that. I create a flamethrower. <laughs> Weird science. I can right? do that. Yeah, no, right? I Weird. can do that. So near the, uh, the the vice clamps on the wall, uh, you see uh, on the adjacent wall, there is one of those long tasers. Like, oh, like a cattle prod. Yeah, like a cattle like a prod. a long one, though. Yeah. Okay. Hell yes. I go over to get the cattle prod. All right. You grab the cattle prod and you turn on the button and it is, yeah, it's on. Okay, great. Move things along there, lads. What have you lo- found? <laughs> a new toy. Just move it. Um, and you and you turn it on, and uh, Kevin. Yes. I keep forgetting that name. <laughs> Your uh, own name? Kevin. I mean, you, what name? Don't lose yourself. You hear that sound of, like, the cattle prod, like, electrifying, and for some reason, that something in the back of your mind just goes nuts. I'm going to need you to roll act under pressure again. Oh, my God. Shit. Six, ten, nine. Nine? Nine, yeah. Okay. So once again, the, the hair starts growing from your body and then the claws like tap against like the keyboards, but you're able to keep control and the hair reverts back into your body. But you two definitely saw him like freak out at the sound of that, that cattle prod. Uh, Turn it off, please. Okay. Uh, okay. It's okay. I'll go it's it. okay. I don't know why, why that's working on me, but I don't remember a cattle prod, but... I gotta. Whew, okay. All right. And as you log into the computer, mm-hmm. it turns on, and you come to the uh, the home page, and the screensaver is you, Doctor Kevin Carpenter, receiving your PhD in pharmaceutical. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <He's just running. laughs> Do I see this? Yeah. 
What the fuck? And as he's saying fuck, Randall draws his revolver and points it at uh, the doctor. Whoa! What are you not telling us here? Look, I have no idea what's going on. You're a doctor, but you better be a damn good actor, all right? Look. Randall, what are you doing? Please put the gun down. Fear is one of the triggers I'm noticing. Yeah, one of the triggers I'm noticing is the one under me index right now. You better start explaining why your mitts are all over this lab. And if you lie to me... Look at me. I woke up in the same room with you. I have no idea. What and, do I gain from this? And I and I, I take out my revolver. Not not pointing at anybody. It's like, Randall, we do not want to be messing with that wolf thing right now. The room shakes again. So please put the gun away. Look. If I had anything to do with this, I would have definitely not have to deal with that fucking octopus thing. Please. I have not. I don't gain anything from this. I cock the gun. Hurry up and find what you need to find in there then. Oh, God. Okay. I just. Oh, God. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to say finding the post-it was uh, one general question. Okay. Uh, you have one more general question. What do you ask? What do I find on the on the computer? Give me some of um, well, wait, 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 hold on. No, no, hold actually, no, that's that is a general, general question. Yeah, okay, ha! cool. What you, cool, cool. Fuck you. <laughs> uh, yeah, you you are going through the computer and you find just just a, a bunch of files. You find scientific experiments. You find your files on like your experiments into genetics. You find like pictures of yourself. You find uh, all these emails and the emails already logged into your email. And as you're going through, it looks like this computer is entirely your own. And then you open up one of the pictures and at first it's completely black. And then you realize this isn't a picture, it's a video. And a light turns on, and you see Randall sitting at a table. And I pull up my gun. No. <laughs> no. And Randall looks at you and goes, Do you have to have that thing on? It's for scientific purposes. All right. What do you need from me? My expertise is in science and genetics. All my experiments are going wrong. I need something else. Like what? Magic. Dark magic. And the file ends. Oy. Do I remember that conversation? Roll plus weird for me. In fact, both of you roll plus weird for me. Okay. Okay. 12, 13, 14, 15. I got, a, shit. I got a 10 total. Both of you get these massive headaches as just seeing oh, that, God. seeing you speak words that you can't remember, suddenly it all comes rushing back. Randall, you remember the accident. You remember waking up. You remember your deal with Charlie Charcoal. You had, you had already known that, but you also remember all the days you walked around with a body that barely worked, that was thin, gaunt, could barely taste, was barely living. And you just remember the resentment that you had through each of your days, just wishing, wishing beyond anything that you could be free of this. And Kevin, you remember all the experiments that you did, all of the attempts to unlock the human genome, all the failed test subjects. And you remember the one that you experimented on yourself that turned you into the beast that you are now. And you remember all the days that you had no control. You remember the times that you installed devices where you live to keep yourself while you're controlled. And both of you remember this moment where you, Kevin, put yourself into the class that are on the wall behind you. And Randall, you remember taking the cattle prod and calming this werewolf down as he tries each time as he tries to break through his vice, you would zap him with this prod. And both of you also remember that meeting at the table. That meeting where a scientist came up to you, Randall, and proposed a way for both of you to get what you want, to be rid of your curses. And all it will require is a simple sacrifice. Huey, you see these two men that you've been going through this house with facing danger and their eyes are flickering and they're clutching their hands to their heads in this massive headache. What do you all do? I feel like I'm kind of putting two and two together little by little. Like I already feel uncomfortable him going all feral. And then I'm seeing this guy kind of like, they're both flirting out. I'm like, oh. 
and I'm looking back to see if the the tentacle monster or anything is behind it. And I just start kind of stepping back from the room. I remember. Me too. We did this. You did this. Yes, I... The cure. I was trying to get rid of my accident. And my demon. Charlie, why didn't you say something? I didn't remember either. You're a bloody demon. Yeah, and you started messing with stuff that was outside my goddamn control. Ah, it makes sense. The device. I'm starting to remember now. What was that little box? What was that? You both remember the moment where you saw... Actually, before I go into this, Huey, mm -hmm. roll plus weird for me real quick. Oh, fuck me, mate. Oh, 10. Nice. All right, so this is going to be dramatic the as hell. One. So as soon as you ask mm -hmm. what that device was, and uh, you all see it like on the ground as well as you say that, Huey, you you experience the same kind of just splitting oh. headache. And you remember being at the lab, spending extra time after school. You remember walking through the park. It's, you know, dark, but, you know, you've, you've walked through here before. It's a safe mm. neighborhood. And then you remember these two silhouettes that just seem to pop out of nowhere. And then you just remember <laughs> blackness. And then you remember being tied up and waking up in the middle of this attic there's these two machines humming and glowing on either side of you and you see these two men arguing and one of them is carrying this large wicked knife and the other is carrying what looks like this remote and then the man that comes up with a wicked knife let's just finish this already i don't care if it's out of order i don't know if this is going to work the the, the, the data is not matching up correctly and then you, as you mm -hmm. wake up, you start struggling, and then the men start coming towards you. The one with the, mm -hmm. uh, the wickedly curved knife is about to like grab at you, and you stand up and you try to grab the pistol from your pocket, and as you do, this man just smacks it out of your hand and it flies to this corner of the room. And as he raises his knife, suddenly the machine starts shaking and going haywire. Jesus is going to blow! And right at that, you, the remote in your hand blows up and as your knife touches the rope suddenly the ropes glow and blow up and there is a bright light that all three of you remember and then you woke up in the attic randall with a knife in your hand huey with, with the remains yeah. of your rope bindings underneath you and kevin with the broken remote well, okay, because that was my yeah. vision, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Are those the screams that I heard whenever I touched something? Past test subjects? Yeah. Past test subjects? Yep. Oh. Those were your memories. Before him. Yeah. So, okay, so that hits me. And uh, Huey just immediately gets this, like, just a wave of dread when he realizes, oh, I, and I just... Kind of sneakily walk back, raising the gun and trying to like reach for the door. Well, I mean, the door is open. We don't really close it. Mm -hmm. So like try to like, like I'm stepping back with the gun pointed. I'm guessing they're still facing over there. They're, they haven't really noticed me. Have you guys noticed me? I'm, I feel like I'm starting to notice you. Yeah, right. I've noticed. Mm -hmm. And I, we also remember this too, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, did, did our, did our visions yeah, happen we, at yeah. the same time? Yeah. All at, back at this oh. point, all three of you know the Everything. whole story. Oh. Okay. God. Oh, so if that's the case. Yeah. Uh, okay, cool. Oh, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, gonna the second I see, even if I see them turn around, I raise up, I like run, I close the door, I grab my multi tool kit, and I jam it to break the actual doorknob. He's getting away. Get yeah. it. Get him now. <laughs> I break the knob so I won't. Uh, open. Roll to act under pressure. Oh boy. I'm gonna say a partial success gets you out of there, a full success allows you to break the doorknob. Nope, that's gonna fail. <laughs> oh boy! And I'm like, eh, no. All right, fuck it. I run. <laughs> to like Why the other, other one. I, I, I tell, uh, I just fucking tra I transform. I transform into the wolf to catch him. All right, you transform into the wolf. Randall, what do you do? I'll slow him down, and I'm going to uh, cast a hex on him. Ooh. So you get to the door, and you burst it open, and you're, like, running out as, like... Oh, I just realized. Can I use my luck point? Oh, yeah, you have those. All right, cool. Yeah. Yeah, so that's an automatic success. So, yeah, you rush out of the door, you close the door and break the lock. Uh, Deuces! So he closes the door and blocks us in? 
basically? Pretty much. Okay. Uh, and I bolt. <laughs> You, so the you're turning into a werewolf. Uh, Randall, he's just like bolted down. You heard like a thunk at the door. Uh, what do you do? Uh, I fucking burst through the door. You burst. Did that happen before or after? Because I'm trying to hex him through the door. Do I know he's see? there. Oh, it doesn't say I have to see you. I know where it's you all are. It's all in here. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say, yeah, roll the hex. Okay. You're fucking magic. Yeah. <laughs> Plus weird, my lovely. Okay. Oh, fuck. It's an eight. No. It's not. No, it's not. You're the one and two. It's, oh! it's a five. Fuck. Tell me it backfires. <laughs> Tell me it hexes this fucker. So, uh, you raise your hand to send out this hex, and it's that exact moment that do- uh, the Dr. Kevin Carpenter rushes <laughs> forward in his werewolf form to break down the door, and your hex shoots out of your hand and hits Kevin. Uh, how much damage does your hex do? Uh, what does it do? Oh, well, when I cast a spell, I have to decide, actually, as well as normal effects I can I can pick from the following. Mm-hmm. The target contracts a disease, uh, target immediately suffers just harm, or target breaks something precious or important. So what did you intend to do to me? Uh, I was going to, like, sprain your ankle. Mm-hmm. Like, break uh, your ankle oh, okay, or yeah, something. Okay, you have to, like, immobilize me. Yeah. So the third, so I was going to okay. break his so ankle. Yeah. That? So, <laughs> yeah, break you, his ankle. that doesn't, but that doesn't say harm, right? Uh, the target immediately oh. suffers harm to harm, magic, ignore armor. If if that's the one I chose. The last option is the target, target breaks, breaks something. something precious or important. Okay. Which so I'm yeah. choosing his bone. Yeah, so you shoot out this hex and uh, the ankle of this werewolf just sh- breaks and you can see the bone coming out of this. <laughs> that is, is that harm. damage? That is that like damage? That, that, that does sound that? like harm in that case. That's harm. Yeah, uh, take two harm. I'm He's dead. dead. You're dead? Double seven. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> he killed me. Yo. Yeah, well. <laughs> so you cured me. I'm dead. <laughs> you shoot out this hex, and it breaks his ankle, and the bone actually, like, breaks out from the skin. And as the as, as your werewolf companion, like, falls, he shatters his neck against the table and falls to the oh, ground shit. dead. Huey, you're running down the stairs. There's, there's, pl- there's plywood and plaster raining down from the roof. The walls are coming in and out like the house is breathing, but they're cracking from the strain. And with each crack, you see more of these writhing purple masses. And you see that the tentacle that you were fighting earlier was just one of a much larger body. I'm going to need you to roll a very, very important act under pressure roll. That's a 10. Plus oh, one. my God. <laughs> Woo! The one time Bravo's luck actually works. Here's the thing with me and, and to, to all our listeners out there. If you guys haven't noticed in all our games and whatever, I have horrible luck. But when it comes down to the wire, when my life is at stake, luck, Lady Luck has got my back. So. Fuck you. <laughs> so, Huey, mm-hmm. you jump the last three stairs, land on the floor, right as the floor cracks underneath you, and you see tentacle, tentacle, dozens of these tentacles just bursting from the wall, oh, the floor, God. and they all reach towards you, and and Randall, you're in the laboratory, all these, like, beakers and Bunsen burners and all of that are just falling and shattering everywhere as more of these tentacles are breaking through the walls and the floor, and you hear Charlie's voice in the back of your head going, it's a summoning ritual. Summoning a demon much, much older than us. Summoning a great old one. What, what, what did you just say? This is how we we're trying to break the curse. Summoning something stronger than us. And Huey, you grab the front door right as these dozens of tentacles are reaching towards you. You open it up and jump through. <gasps> and as you do, you land on green grass of this lawn and you turn around and you see this shabby two-story house shuddering into itself, all of these tentacles grasping around it, and you see the foundation of the building break free from the ground, and you see this house crushing into itself, and there's a moment where we see Randall being wrapped around these tentacles as the room closes in on him as well, and Randall lets out a scream. And Huey, you watch the house literally collapse into itself until it disappears. Oh. And there was only you on the lawn. 
I like stand up, I like shaking, and just kind of look around like. What the fuck? And that's where we'll end the session. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Man. Whoa, that was good. That was nuts. I, I was taking a risk with that, <laughs> but I like that.